Hello everyone, Alex here. I've been wanting to record this video for a little while now, but I've had a lot going on. Um, but I think it was an important video to record because I've been in the fortunate position pretty much for, for the last nine, ten months to be the only person um, out there shooting the new um, or forthcoming, I think in October, um, Retra Pro Max flash guns. Um, I shot them for most, well, since November last year in a prototype state where it was the innards of this flash gun mounted in an existing uh, older housing. And then for my last two trips to Cayman and onto Galapagos, actually using these production ready versions of, of the flash. And I thought it was a good opportunity to talk you through them and to mainly show you some pictures taken with them and just talk a little about the performance. Um, there's a couple of things I'd like to start by saying. The first is that I'm um, not financially in any way connected with Retra and I'm not a Retra ambassador. I simply, because I'm diving and shooting a lot, they send me products to test and give them feedback on. And knowing that I'm going to do lots of photography, it's also great for their reliability testing. Um, and I say to you, as I say to Retra, is that... Um, I don't want to have a link particularly with any strobe manufacturing company. I will simply use the flash guns that I think are the best for my photography. For me, light is too important to muck about with. Um, I'm not going to use flash guns I don't want to use. And I say this to Retro and I, I say, you know, while well, your flash guns are the flash guns I want to use, I'm going to be using Retros. And when there's something out there that I would rather be using, both from a performance and reliability standpoint, then I'll switch over to using that. So you won't see me with little retro logos in my pictures when I share them online or anything. Um, and I'm not an ambassador, so I'm very free to say exactly um, what I want about these flash guns. But the reason I choose to use them is they're the flash guns that, that I want to use. And I would say as a general comment about the pro line, the reason I like the retro flash guns is that they are, you know, relatively small flash guns which means after years and years of having separate flash guns for wide angle and macro and for wide angle you need big powerful flash guns that pack a lot of punch that give a great quality of light in a wide beam and for macro you don't want a great big bulky flash gun because it limits your flash positioning and the thing that i love about the retras is that when i'm on a wide angle trip they're eight battery great big powerful fast recycling flash guns and when i'm on a macro trip or a cold water trip i only take four batteries for each i use um, you know, the smaller back ends, um, the superchargers on the old ones, the boosters on this generation. And I have a much smaller flash gun that can slot in next to my macro port and gives me full flexibility on how I like my macro pictures. And that's why I like these flash guns so much um, because of that flexibility. Added to that, Retro have a whole range of different accessories to modify the light. And there are many interesting ones of those that, for me as well, allow me to have a very different performance from these flash guns. This is a, um, a warming wide angle diffuser that's on this one at the moment. So um, enough of my ugly mug. I'm going to switch to the other camera now and talk you through some of the details on the flash guns. The first thing I would say about the Retra um, Pro Series flash guns is the new Pro Max flash gun is filling exactly the same niche as the previous two Pro models. So this isn't an automatic upgrade. If you have existing Pros or Pro X Retros, this is just the next generation in that line. And in fact, Retro has spent a lot of effort, although they've changed the flash tube to a more efficient flash tube, um, they've put a lot of effort into making the light output from this flash gun identical in terms of quality, coverage, and power to the older Retro Pro flashes. Which means if you're an older user, there's no need to upgrade. But if you decide that you want to add an additional flash gun to your lineup, you can buy one of these and it will slot in seamlessly. Um, the main changes with this flash gun are under the bonnet, as they say. And, and the first of those is that by using a more efficient flash gun um, and, and a completely redesigned circuitry inside, the battery life of these flash guns is really, really improved. And... Um, you know, I was shooting, you know, all day in Galapagos on the same set of batteries, no problem at all. You know, lots of action photography, lots of high power photography. Yeah, quite happy with that. 
Um, and I think it's really noticeable how m much improved the battery life is, which is it's just a really nice thing. It means that in most situations, you can load batteries into this for the day and they're in there for the day. And I think particularly because these flash guns are working with AA batteries, which brings the convenience of using a, a widespread and widely available flash um, type of battery and a very safe technology compared to lithium batteries. Um, the downside of them is because you're using single cells, they're a bit more fiddly to load than, say, um, a battery pack would be. The downside of battery packs is the convenience of loading you lose um, in terms of the price of buying them. Because I can assure you for AA um, Eneloops um, are a lot cheaper than any battery pack, pack that's out there on the market. Um, the controls are nicely spaced out on the back. This is um, the retro. I'll just grab the other one actually because it's it's got the um, the booster on it, um, and I know the power's on on this one. Um, and but the big sort of change you'll see on the back is rather than having a coloured light in the middle here, um, which tells you the mode of the battery, and when you're in the test mode, tells you the power level of the battery. Um, what the, the the strobe now has is this LCD screen, which has got very high resolution. It tells you the the level. There's the TTL mode. It doesn't film very well. You can see it's 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 dancing a bit. And then you can see how in the TTL mode I can do plus and minus TTL. Not that I've tried this <laughs> underwater. Um, you've got the HSS mode, and that little screen is telling you what's going on with your camera. Um, when you're in the manual mode, um, obviously that little screen is saying M for manual, and then that that number is the percentage of the power. So this is at 5% power, 12% power, 50% power. Um, obviously, you can see from where the arrow is pointing here, it's also on 50% power. But particularly on a night dive, that screen is very valuable. And if you're new to retro flashes, I think as well, it, it makes them more user friendly. I have to say, as an existing user, I was quite happy with a traffic light system for battery levels. I was perfect. I didn't need. To, I don't need to know the voltage. I don't really know what that means. Um, okay, I can read the bar graph of how full the battery is, but the traffic light was telling me the same thing. It looks pretty on the else uh, else uh, um, LED screen, but uh, LCD screen. But I'm really not too too bothered about that. Um, actually, I don't know what the, L, uh, the screen does when you turn it to SOS mode. Oh, it just says SOS, and then the the thing will flash. Um, the ca camera, ha the strobe has the same features as the other ones. Um, in the manual mode, you've got a test flash feature. When you press this button, it will test flash. Um, um, it never films properly that <laughs> whenever I try and film it. Um, and that's also quite a nice um, option. If you're wanting to trigger remote strobes to test that they're working, you can do a test fire like that. Um, I think that one came through on the camera. Um, a test fire like that um, to trigger your remote strobes and make sure that a, a complicated remote strobe setup is working. And we'll see some remote strobe setups, but you can just as easily take a photo in that situation. Right, um, that's the, the back and the controls, and there's not really much to talk about there. The only thing that's r the biggest change, I think, really from the previous generations is how the batteries are loaded. And the difference between the, the, um, the older retro flashes and the new ones are how these fit in um, and you can see that um, the advantage of the new system is that all now eight batteries fit into the strobe rather than four of them being outside so the difference between the strobe when it's got four batteries in on the right there and the different and the strobe when it's got eight batteries in is that actually the supercharger which is now called a booster doesn't stick out so far and if i take that off you can see how the batteries go in so now um also the o-rings are now on the outside here so that that really stops them snagging you're not trying to push o-rings down into into holes you're now just got um a top that just screws over the top of them so that's really easy and then your batteries load up in here um i've got some old 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 um gash inner loops here um, and um, you've got one set here, and if I take those out, I'll take two of them out so you can see. There's another set nestling down below them. Um, I, I, one thing I like about this system is that you can see how the batteries line up. Um, one of the problems of something you know occasionally people would have with the superchargers is you'd load the first four in, then you'd put the supercharger on the back, and then you could mistakenly get the batteries the wrong way around. This way, obviously, you can see the batteries and you can line them all up in their pairs and it makes it much easier not to to make a mistake lining them up of course if you do make a mistake lining them up your battery test will reveal that um but that's pretty much all i've got to say about the flash gun and just to show you a little bit about it far more interesting than looking at the strobes that i think is to show you some pictures 
And these are just some pictures I've taken using the the new Retro Pro Max flashes um, recently. If you're a regular sort of watcher of my review sessions, you'd have probably seen most of these before um, because these are the main flash guns I've been using throughout the year. So the first pictures, I'd say first of all, I've, I've used the flash gun from the, the tropics to, to cold water. This is a, a Nikon Z8 shot from Cayman. And this is a Sony A7, oh no, it's only a one shot from Iceland. Um, and use them in great visibility, like in Iceland and Cayman, um, and also in much poorer visibility. And found the strobes really adaptable in all these conditions, which is great for me because I like to, to challenge myself as an underwater photographer to take pictures in a, a wide variety of conditions. This is a marine iguana in Galapagos, shot with Sony as well. Um, I think, you know, they're obviously very powerful flash guns, able to light up big scenes, in bright tropical conditions working against the sun this is a, a coral reef scene in the red sea able to light this up very happily and very easily um and and also really you know to give an even quality of light across the the frame which really improves the quality of your shots um this is another red sea shot here and i think you know what i like about the flash guns is they give that soft even illumination that flatters you as a photographer strobes that have strong directional beams can give a lot of power but they require a lot of detail adjustment on strobe positions to get an evenness of light on the subject whereas strobes that have natural wide soft light are just much easier to use um they they, they create a more flattering light they flatter the photographer in reality by creating a nice even illumination without hot spots without big shadows across your subject matter and you can see that here just this is a picture of the of a mermaid statue in, in cayman with my my wife modeling this is shot with the um this was oh I'm not sure what this was shot with probably with Sony actually no with the Nikon Z8 um there I think they've got the power though to really light up big areas even working in very bright shallow conditions against the light um, which is, is is really good seeing this shot's a good example of that um, and they're able to you know to deal with these big scenes um, you know pretty effectively which is is really pleasing as a photographer this is shot with the Sony A7R5. Um, I like that I can modify the light and create different lighting effects, more inward lighting or cross strobes effects, isolating subject matter against the background. This one's shot with just the, the, the strobe diffusers taken off just to create a slightly harder edge. And this is an extremely hard edge created, um, I think, using either the beam restrictors or the reflectors. I don't remember now. I think this is with the reflectors, actually, giving a very strong punch of light and really allowing me to pick this sponge out from the background. Um, the softness of light, I think, really pays you back when you're very close to subject matter. This um, green turtle shot with the MWL and, you know, super close to the lens. But the softness of light, very, very pleasing, just creates a very naturalistic feel to the images, um, even with, you know, subjects, you know, right on the lens, um, producing really pleasing lighting conditions. And I've used the flashes a lot for more creative lighting as well here, working as, as off camera strobes on the Thistle Gorman. You can see some shots here with with off camera strobes creating pleasing effects from the light one tip i have for anyone who's interested in off-camera strobe photography is that you should always have your best strobes as your off-camera strobes they're usually the, the main key light in the image and therefore you want your highest quality strobe and i think m the mistake a lot of photographers make is that they they maybe have an older strobe that's a spare strobe that they say oh i'll use this as my off-camera strobe where in reality what you should do is you should put that older strobe on your camera and take one of your best strobes off and use that as a remote strobe or in this case a pair of remote strobes um i've also um shot fluorescence um with them this is a um a, um a um multi in camera um double exposure um of a fluorescence of a coral reef and then the the hive which is a building um um on the waterfront in missoul eco resort in or missoul resort in the background here um and they've been good for that plenty of power for shooting sunset or, or sunrise split levels um, which usually require a good kick of strobe light to to light them up particularly the reef ones do um, and they're, they're yeah, nice to shoot those pictures with it and then here working against strong sunlight trying to light up big scenes um, here with a school of masked pufferfish and here with just a simple little reef scene in Tibetaha in the Philippines um, the pufferfish were in the Red Sea um, shot against the light um, but having lots of strobe power in order to to shoot against the light um, you know, obviously work well with more creative photography here a longer exposure um, capturing the movement of this school of glassfish in the Red Sea 
Um, and here we're shooting in Galapagos without diffusers on the flash guns. I nearly always shoot with the diffusers on, on coral reefs. But in Galapagos, I generally in, in other sort of more big animals slash lower visibility destinations, such as many places in the East Pacific or somewhere like the Maldives. In those situations, I quite often shoot the retros without the diffusers on them, just to have a slightly more punchy, slightly more long throw light um, to light up subjects like this dark sea lion pup underneath an overhang. Not an ideal situation to try and light up. Um, and this shot here, I would have liked to have had my diffusers on for. You can see the light is a little bit harsh, um, but you know we were down there waiting for hammerheads that on this dive didn't turn up. So I was just shooting this Mexican hogfish, male Mexican hogfish that was swimming around in front of my lens. I didn't have the right lighting set up for this particular fish. The fish is still perfectly fine, but I would have liked a softer, more even light on this fish um, with the diffusers. But on this dive, I'd chosen to go without them because I was targeting more distant subjects, in, in this case, the hammerheads. Um, macro shooting, um, this is um, a blue belly blenny from the Red Sea, um, creating, you know, they're, they're great strobes for that because you can, you can pull them right in next to the port and really front light your subjects. And I think this is something that a lot of photographers miss when they, they sort of finally buy a really big pair of, of powerful strobes. They feel that those strobes are, you know, perfect for everything. But actually, small strobes for macro are really beneficial for lighting the front of subjects and really, you know, getting that, that, that light onto the subject so that you can, you know, the side of the subject that the camera is looking at is lit. Um, and I think that helps you create this more naturalistic look in your macro photography. This is a Matoti octopus in Lembe, um, a spiny head blenny in Cayman. Um, for blackwater diving with the retras, I think one of the retro accessories is brilliant for blackwater diving and no one's talking about it. And that's the retro reflector. What the reflector does is it narrows the beam of the strobe down, which for sort of macro-y um, blackwater you won't even notice. But it gives you an extra stop of light, which means that, you know, for blackwater photography, you're usually shooting quite closed apertures. And having an extra stop of light is therefore really, really valuable. It means you can run the strobe at a lower power have a faster recycle time just because of a, an optical accessory that's giving you an extra drop of power at a lower, you know, so you can basically turn the strobe down two clicks and still have loads and loads of, of power um, coming out of it to light up your subject. This is a flounder in, in Nembe and this is a, um, a, um, a mollusk villager larvae in, in, in the Cayman Islands. Um, I think, you know, a great test of how good strobes are is, is very extreme close focus wide angle or, or wide angle macro. And these are EMWL shots from Lembe. Um, these are shot with the D850 um, on that trip. And, you know, I think the evenness of light in these shots really, you know, shows the value of, of good quality strobes. You know, when the strobes are really close to the subject because the lens is really close to the subject, creating a really pleasing quality of light is very hard. Um, and people struggle with that in these types of pictures. And I really like that they've all got a really strong quality of light. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an overview of how the strobes are, are performing. Um, and um, I hope that helps guide you in terms of, per of, of potential purchases or not in the future.